Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm glad you're here worshiping in the sanctuary. Others are uh, worshiping by live stream, and we're glad that together we can join in, in the worship of our God and Savior uh, this morning. Well, this is a special day in the life of Harlem. It's adoption, foster care, refugee adoption Sunday. We made it our own. So uh, we welcome some folk from Bethany, Claire, Mallory, and Bruce here today. They're going to be sharing during the worship service. The praise team is up on the stage right now. <laughs> look, at, look at them come. Look at them. In just a minute, we're going to worship together. I invite you to consider this passage of scripture from 1 Peter chapter 2. You are chosen by God. Chosen for the high calling of priestly work. Chosen to be a holy people. God's instruments to do his work and speak for him. To tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. From nothing to something. From rejected to accepted. Now that's the living trans or the message translation. Listen who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let's pause and pray silently that God will bless this time, that we'll be open, soft to the work that he has to do in our lives, and uh, then we'll continue to worship the Lord together. Let's stand up. 
you all to self-identify this morning as a wretch. <laughs> How many of you have done that lately? We're going to sing it in just a minute. I'd like for you to, to dwell on the truth. That there's folk who are self-identifying in a lot of different ways today. But what's most important is that we identify who we are in the light of God's holy word and by the conviction, empowering, tender mercies and work of the Holy Spirit. And apart from Christ, we are wretches. But in Christ, we have been adopted and we've been made his dear children. Uh, let's sing together.
be aware that you have done this great work in our hearts. Holy Spirit, take the things of Christ and make them real in our hearts. So that as we leave this morning, as we go into the week ahead, we're praying that, Lord, you will equip your church to be a bright light for you in this world. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Wave to the folk around you and then be seated. Lud's coming on up. He's going to introduce the guests that are here today. And uh, please pay attention. Let's work together. Good morning. Uh, it's really exciting to uh, to celebrate our Adoption Sunday and Orphan Sunday. And this year we're going to uh, uh, do the refugee part also. Yeah, we're, um, last year we didn't because of the uh, coronavirus. So the best part about that is that we get to do it two times this year, so uh, that would be nice. Uh, I'm really excited to have um, a couple of people here. One gentleman that I've known for years, Mr. Bruce Mossberg, and uh, uh, he works with Bethany also for many, many years, and a um, uh, good friend also, and uh, he's also a father that's adopted, and uh, we're glad to have Claire here also, and uh, this is the first time I met her this morning, and. Uh, and then Mallory had the table set up in the front. So um, thank you so much for being here, and thank you so much for what you do. So Mallory, uh, if you want to say a few things, you may. So you may could. I'm never at a loss of words normally, but I am this morning. So That's OK. So. I'm not typically either. Hello. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. I haven't spoken into a mic in like a year and a half. So can everybody hear me OK? Awesome. So, as Lud mentioned, my name is Claire Hopkins, and I am actually a refugee foster care family recruiter. Mouthful, but basically my job is doing things like this, where I get to present to our community, educate, spread awareness, and then hopefully I can touch a few people in the audience who are curious to learn more about how they can step up and be a refugee foster parent. So with that being said, I want to be mindful of your time, but I also would love to share with you just a few short details and facts about our program. So Bruce and I serve in Grand Rapids, and we are able to license families in Grand Rapids and Kent County, and then also families that live within a one hour radius of Grand Rapids, which is great, because that includes Holland, right? So. We have three programs. I'm going to briefly touch on them all, and then I'm going to highlight one. But I encourage you and I invite you that to learn more. So let's not stop this conversation here today. Let's talk after. I would love to engage with you. I invite you to an information meeting. It's a great way to learn more about our programs, about refugee youth, and then also covers the next step in the licensing process. Um, it's a great opportunity, though, because it doesn't require or any commitment and so you can join you can gain some insight and then if you feel called to move forward you can do that so those three programs so we serve unaccompanied children we have a transitional foster care program which is a reunification program and then a long-term foster care program and then the program that I really want to spend some time on today and telling you about is our unaccompanied refugee minor program so three big words, right? And we kind of know what those words mean individually, but what do they mean when we put them together? So unaccompanied, we can assume that is arriving alone. Refugee, we hear that word often, and then minor, we know that's youth, right? And so, but when we put those together, who are we really serving? We're serving youth that have fled from dangerous situations. This could be from community violence, war, religious or ethnic persecution, um, natural disasters. You know, there's not a one fit all, but we do know these trends. And we know that they're being forcibly displaced to flee from their, the place that is their home in their homeland. So unaccompanied refugee minors are typically coming to us from refugee camps overseas. And we see them in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. 
And the youth that we serve, um, after they have their refugee status, and they have typically arrived, like I said, from a refugee camp, they're then placed into long-term refugee foster families, which is phenomenal, because youth are not only have they experienced trauma in their homeland, but they also are survived a dangerous travel, right? And so when they come into your home, you get to provide that safe, loving, supportive environment and give them a family unit and help them thrive and learn skills to live independently here in the United States. And it's a really, really phenomenal opportunity for families because not only are you helping someone learn about our culture here, our, our social norms here, our religious practices, but you also get to learn about other countries, cultures, holidays, favorite dishes, and so it's a phenomenal aspect where you can welcome somebody into your home, care for them, and then help them thrive here in the States and to build skills to live independently. So with all that being said, our youth are typically between 13 and 17. Please don't let the teen age um, discourage you from reaching out. There's so, so much that you can gather and, and learn from it with these youth. And we also see, so we see sibling groups, we see pregnant and parenting youth. So if you are interested in having that tender age in your home, you could welcome a pregnant or parenting youth so that not only you can mold the mother and help her gain skills, but you can also help her infant grow. So I'm going to stop there. And like I said, I hope this conversation doesn't end here. Check us out online. Please stop at our booth after to learn not only about refugee foster care, but domestic and adoption as well. And you don't have to become a refugee foster parent to give back. You can simply become an ambassador and leader in your community by learning more. So I would love to talk with you more after this. I thank you so much, and I'm going to look to my expert, Bruce, to see if he has anything to say. Otherwise, I'll be here afterwards. Perfect. We'll be hanging around, so please come see us. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Let's pray, and then uh, we're going to hear some song. We're going to hear a song and then sing as well. Lord, um, your word says that before we're born, you know us. If we settle on the far side of the sea, your hand will guide us. And Lord, I'm thinking about a bunch of young people that don't know um, how it is they ended up where they are. But they need your love, they need your care. And we pray that you raise up many who can be refugee, foster care, parents, and families. Lord, that's just one need, and the needs are many. Thank you for what Bethany is doing and can do. Thank you for what other groups and organizations are doing. But Lord, today we're opening ourselves up to really consider what you've laid before us in this. So throughout the day, continue to impress it on our hearts, what we can do. And uh, we want to be open, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
or an orphanage, or um, a refugee. I'd like to use these words as a prayer. Could you pray for me, please? I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me, God, once again, just who I am, because I need to know. You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe what you say of me, I believe. The only thing that matters now is everything that you think of me. And you, God, I find my worth. In you, I find my identity. Taking all I have, and now I'm laying it at your feet. You have every failure, God. You have every victory. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.
it is a time to pray, but remember the little card you got? Uh, there's some folk that you're going to be praying for this week. Uh, can we keep? Yeah, we can. We can keep those cards. I was going to offer it and I didn't even know yet. So anyway, yes, keep the cards. Be praying for the kids that are on those cards and, um, and we'll watch and see what God does. Yes? And it is time now to bless the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, we can't take the offering the way we would normally do, although now it's normal not to take the offering, isn't it? So uh, the, there's a box out in the narthex you can also give online. Uh, but this week we want to highlight the fact that a week from this coming Tuesday is the blood drive. So please be aware that that's another way that we can give of ourselves. There's need for help during the day. And if you haven't made an appointment yet, feel free to go online and make that appointment. And if you need help with going online to make the appointment, Ellie is in the office uh, generally speaking, 10 to 2, so just uh, find, find her on the phone and she'll help you register as well. Um, and let's pray together. God, for every opportunity we have to serve you, we give you thanks. Thanks for the food distribution time last Monday. Thanks for the, food, uh, the blood drive coming up. We pray, Lord, that you will bless each effort. But over, above, and under it all, we're grateful for relationships that are developed that we can point others to you, Jesus. And, uh, and help them to want, uh, oh Lord, we pray that they too will want to know you, whom to know is life eternal. And we pray it in your mighty name. Amen. Let's stand together now and sing the hymn. Just, well, you know what it is. Let's stand and sing. <laughs> it is uh, to think about those things. And I'm really hot, Steve. Turn me down a little bit. Just a tad. There we go. Better. I think everything was... Ooh. Have your Bibles open. 
Uh, we're in Luke 8 today, and we're considering this series of, of messages entitled, Sitting at the Feet of Jesus. And we're up to this, this passage where the one who sits at Jesus' feet finds freedom. If you have your Bibles or your phones, please lift those up and repeat after me. This is the Bible. This is the Bible. It is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. Here the Father teaches His will. Here the Father teaches His will. The Son shows His love. The Son shows His love. The Spirit reveals His wisdom and power. The Spirit reveals His wisdom and power. Now let's put them down and pray with me. Oh dear Lord. Oh dear Lord. Make my heart soft. My mind alert. And your glory, my greatest concern. And your glory, my greatest concern. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 8, I begin reading at verse 26. Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the, by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him, and they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs were, was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened. And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, Return to your home. Declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. We end our reading there at the end of verse 39. So one day, Jesus entered the Gentile country of the Gerasenes. How do we know that it was a Gentile country? A herd of pigs. That, that's a big giveaway, okay? There he met a man who could not be controlled. Even chains could not bind him. The man endured the torment of a legion of demons that sought to destroy him. And now when Jesus enters a life, we know that that life is forever changed. When Jesus entered into this man's life, his life was forever changed. Jesus brought about peace and freedom. Later, the townspeople came to Jesus and found the very same man sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. The man who had suffered such turmoil and torture had been set free from his tormentors. <coughs> In his life, the Savior came and destroyed Satan's foothold of domination, of fear, and of agony. First off, let's look at the fact that for this man, up until the time he met Jesus, there was no sitting down. There was no peace. There was no calm. 
The disciples now had seen Jesus heal and drive out evil spirits before. They had seen vivid, plain-as-day evidence of Jesus' authority and power. The, 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 the section just above, you remember, peace, be still. Remember that? The storm. The disciples thought they were going to die. Jesus, with the word of his mouth, calmed the waves. They had seen his authority and power. Now they arrived on the east shore of the Sea of Galilee. It must have been a pathetic sight. Completely, this man completely overpowered by demons to the very core of his being. He had no control over himself. He had been bound with chains and shackles. He had been kept under guard. Presumably so that he weren't, wouldn't hurt others or himself. The text says he was unclothed. Oh, I'm sure they tried to keep some clothes on him. The text says he cried out. His family must have tried to quiet him down over and over again. This man had so identified with the demons that controlled him that now he considered his name to be changed. His name was now Legion. He was completely controlled and being destroyed by a powerful demon. He would break his bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. He could not. He would not be still. The situation seemed hopeless. And, and please think about whatever hopeless situation you find yourself in. be as overwhelming as this or just fearing the conversation you might have to have Monday morning. Let's think about that as we continue. The demons recognized Christ's power. It was evidenced when the man fell down before Jesus. They knew who they were in front of. They tried to gain control of the situation by using Jesus' name. Jesus, Son of the Most High God. In desperation, he invoked God to not allow Jesus to torment him, not to send him into the abyss. And here, brothers and sisters, we come face to face with the authority of Jesus Christ. He is Lord. Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. The demon responded, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. Jesus simply said, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to command him, them to depart into the abyss. The abyss, that is, into hell, the place Satan is kept. They knew they were face to face with the one to whom the final judgment had been committed. They knew they were face to face with Jesus, Son of the Most High God. We can see clearly that Jesus controls the ones controlling the man, Satan and his demons. This man was completely dependent on Jesus' rescue, on his saving work. And Jesus gave them permission to go into the herd of pigs. Jesus Christ's authority is not a derived authority. The way a king or a president receives authority, his authority is simply because of who he is. Not because of what he's been given, simply because of who he is. The people who are walking with him and, and witnessed him when he was here on earth marveled at his authority because it wasn't typical. It wasn't the kind the scribes and the Pharisees had. It wasn't the kind Caesar had. It was the kind that can only come because it's part and parcel of who he is. Jesus freed the man so that he could become what God had made him to be. The family tried to simply tie him up. Christ came not to bind the man, but to set him free from the, even the need to be bound. Now, who's bothered by the whole pig thing? <laughs> well, poor innocent creatures. Anybody? Because I won't go on with the next point. Okay, Lana, thanks for raising your hand because there's others like you as well. I like bacon. <laughs> All right. That is right. I believe that Jesus gave permission so that you and I sitting here today reading the account could know what was going on in that man's life before Jesus freed him. You want a visible picture of what was going on inside? You got it. 
pigs destroying themselves and not just one a herd that same battle was going on inside of him oh yeah they wanted to destroy that man what was the result then the people went out to see what had happened and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind and they were so happy and they wanted to know more what was it scared oh one more they lived happily ever after no they were scared silly they were afraid it's what grabbed hold of the disciples' hearts when he called the storm. The same word is used there. They were in absolute awe. Even the wind and the waves obeyed him. This fear of the neighbors, though, has a mixture of awe and great fear. Uh, the, the man's neighbors were frightened as well. In fact, it, it revealed something of their unbelief. They did not want the man who could control such power with them. They asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. Yeah, there was unbelief there that day, and it resulted in fear. But there was faith as well. The one who had been naked was now clothed. The one who cried out and tried to destroy himself was in his right mind. The man who could not be controlled was sitting at Jesus' feet was sitting at Jesus' feet. He became a devoted servant of Jesus. Christ's actions changed that hopeless situation. Brothers and sisters, he still works just that way. Remember the hopeless situation you were thinking of? Listen to Hebrews 2. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself, Jesus, likewise partook of the same things. For through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through their fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. Or as the message translates, it freed all who cower through life, scared to death of death. Whatever it is that looms large is a hopeless situation. Put it up against this. Death has been defeated. Now, some of the hopeless situations we've envisioned are not life and death. At least it doesn't appear that way right now. But we know what it is like to have someone speak life into our lives. What it's like for someone to speak the, the words of life into a despairing situation, don't we? It's always based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. We are a people of great hope. We are a people of freedom because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. So that situation that seems hopeless, what seems hopeless now, especially in times like this, remember these things, brothers and sisters. God honors seeking hearts. The disciples, the man, you and me, Especially in times like this, we need to be seeking his heart. Oh Lord, make my mind alert, my heart soft, and your glory my greatest concern. Look with me again at verses 38 and 39. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went, a home, went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. seems there was a time to rise from sitting at his feet and get up <laughs> go home and obey and tell and share aren't we glad that he did that there it is the first Christian missionary he, there he is in the garrisons telling others about Jesus what Jesus had done for him Brothers and sisters, when Jesus enters a life, that life is set free. Let's pray. 
Lord, here at your feet, we surrender again and acknowledge that you alone have the words of eternal life. You alone set us free from the fear of death. You alone are able to do that, and we thank you. Help us more and more every day, with increasing measure, get our minds and hearts around that tremendous truth so that we can walk about in the freedom you have for us, Jesus. And it's in your name we ask these things. Amen. Do any of you have a word of scripture that you'd like to share with us? A testimony, something you've seen God at work doing? And I will bring you the mic as if Lud is willing to relinquish it. There we go. Thanks, Lud. <laughs> Anyone? Verse of scripture? How is it that it applies to your heart this morning? Help us. If you can remember uh, Psalm 146, this was a psalm that I read this week that gave some encouragement. Encouragement. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth, and on that very day his plans perish. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps his faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. Mm -hmm. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind, and the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyone else? That psalm again was? 146. 146. Okay. Look it up. Lord Jesus, thank you that you set the prisoners free. We saw it today in the passage. And we want so much to know that in, in the folk that we hold dear and, and seem to be struggling right now. In fact, some of us right here, right now are struggling. Lord, set us free so that we can walk about in the abundant life you have for your people. Oh Lord, help us to pray for one another and seek your face concerning these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together and sing.
sure to meet uh, Bruce and Mallory and Claire out by the table in the narthex. And if there's too big a crowd, just wait a while and join them a little later, right? And uh, for more information, feel free to look it up online at bethany.org. Org. <laughs> feel free to look that up as well. At the Gate Sunday School class will be held by Zoom and in person out here in the narthex at 11 o'clock. Please join us for a discussion of the passage this morning. Tonight at 5.30 we're going to watch episode 4 of The Chosen. And if you haven't come yet, please come this night at 5.30 for the best episode of the whole series. That's according to a famous movie critic, John Entry. <laughs> And um, next Sunday, we're going to share in the Lord's Supper, so please use this week in preparation for that. The prayer team is available by the organ or in the narthex if you'd like time uh, for someone, take time to, for someone to pray with you about a concern you have. They will meet you there. Receive this benediction. Now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus, the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all both now and forevermore. Amen.